Hello, hello, and welcome back to the channel. As most of you know, I'm Topher. And for those of you who don't know and just randomly decided to click on my video, welcome to the channel. I'm Topher. Thank you for stopping by. So we're here to do a reaction, and we're diving back into the end of the world with you. We're diving into episode six. Um, I just finished reacting to episode five, and there were all manner of shenanigans and things going on that I'm like, I was not expecting this turn of events, but I'm here for this turn of events and I'm very interested to see where they take this turn of events. So we're just gonna dive in and find out. Okay, well that was episode six and I feel like we have just started to dip our toes into some of the emotional weight that this series has left in store for us. Um, but yeah, similar things I said in episode four, which you guys don't know because episode four is now the lost reaction. It's you, you guys have no idea what I said in there. Um, but I made comments about how the particular set of emotions we were dealing with in that episode were so complex and there is no black and white definitive this is the right thing to do this is the wrong thing to do when it in regards to Matsumi's feelings about going to see his mother his motivations behind behind why he was going to see her and how he ultimately felt about that and before um, Ritsu kind of yanked him out of that and said, basically, you're not going. Um, and it was just a very just complex set of emotions because I feel like society or the way we're raised kind of tells us that, you know, we should make up with our family. We should do the right thing it's the right thing to make amends and be them be there be there for them in their hour of need this that the other so going to be with his mother was the quote unquote right thing to do but he it, he's a human being and he's had a very complex tumultuous relationship with his mother um lots of negativity and hurt feelings tied up lots of emotions and before the meteor was coming he had already cut ties with her he had for however many years at this point so he had, things had gotten so bad that he said my life would be better to just not have you in it versus dealing with this emotional turmoil anymore and it's this, like I said, complex sort of back and forth. Yes, it sucks that she's in the situation and it, I would not want wish that on anybody. And it feels like the right thing is to go take care of her. But at the end of the day, like he did not want to go see her. He was going to go there out of obligation because he felt like it was the right thing to do. He was doing the right thing in his mind, but it's not something he wanted to do because of these things. And I feel like he, you know, he's entitled to those feelings. He's entitled to those emotions. And some people will say, well, you know, it's the right thing should have been, he should have gone to see her. And I can see where that argument is coming from, but it's, it's complex. There's no definitive yes, no, right, wrong. It's just this complex gray area. And this episode explored some more of just that complex gray area that we as human beings just live in so towards the beginning of the episode when ritsu was off talking with uh meguru um she was like what happened to my sister you were the last person that she reached out to you the last person she called um why didn't you answer why didn't you save her? if only you picked up the phone she would have still been here blah 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 blah, blah. and i was like kind of stepping in there not necessarily taking the defense of ritsu but coming from the place of a right now in the episode we don't know the full landscape of what happened between the two of them we don't know what his reasoning was for not answering the phone he could have been asleep maybe i for the longest time i would always just have my phone 
loud and proud and blah 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 and just you know it'll go off at all hours of night notifications phones text whatever it is and like for the last year year and a half i've just had it on vibrate consistently i've not taken my phone off vibrate um so i sleep with it on vibrate i go to work with it on vibrate i just live with my phone on vibrate so now when i'm sleeping i'm sleeping um so if I might sleep through a phone call. I might sleep through a text or something like that. Um, he could have had his phone on vibrate. He could have, like there's any number of reasons why he could have potentially not answered the call. Or maybe he was looking at the phone and just did not want to answer the phone. Um, sometimes, sometimes we have friends that we love dearly. We wish nothing but the best for them, but sometimes they can get emotionally draining and you're, you're just not in the headspace to deal with someone sometimes you can't you can't give from an empty well and sometimes people can be terribly draining and you don't have anything to give to them in that moment i'm not saying that any of these things were the case all i'm saying is there are so many reasons that he that could have been why he did not answer the phone and we don't know what the reason was all we are saying is hey you didn't answer the phone and she were the last person she called and she would she could be alive now if you answer the phone and i'm like that is a lot that is a lot of pressure to put on him that is a lot of pressure to put on anybody i can understand where the sentiment is coming from um i can understand why meguru feels this way because again lost his sister lost his sister and it's probably spent so much time thinking about this like hey this is the last person my sister reached out to maybe if they'd reached out to somebody else maybe if they reached out to me or my mom or this that the other maybe somebody else would have answered and would have been there for her or you know maybe somebody else wouldn't have answered who knows there's there's no telling what could have happened maybe he maybe if he answered he could have talked her down maybe if he answered he couldn't have talked her down maybe he could not wouldn't have gotten there in time maybe, who knows there is so many ways that scenario could have played out because it's a very touchy subject it's a very touchy and i feel like they handled it um well um in these series of scenes but it's like there's so many reasons that he may not have answered and even if he did answer who knows what it would have done so i feel like it's a lot of unfair pressure to put on him saying that you didn't answer her so now she is dead it feels very unfair to do that to anybody um and it feels unfair to that person to have to to feel almost obligated to be this person's lifeline again again it's a very complex series of emotions because if they're your friend truly your friend it, it's kind of an unspoken sort of thing, unspoken obligation. Like you don't necessarily feel like, oh my God, I feel like I have to answer every, uh, otherwise something's gonna happen. Like that's not how you're trudging through life, but like it just, it feels like an unfair burden to put solely on his shoulders, if that makes sense. Maybe. Um, so yeah, I feel like Meguru was being a little unfair there, and then Yuma was kind of hopping in, but Yuma is young and impulsive, so the way he's looking at things right now may be he's not taking quite everything into the picture. He's just taking the little bits he's hearing, and he's like, you know, I was a true fan, and I couldn't do anything. I was a normal fan, and you couldn't do anything. All we could do is just find out the next day that it was done, but you were there. You were with her, blah, 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 and you could have saved her, and it's like, again, we don't necessarily know that he could have. It would have been nice if that were the case, if he had saved her, but we don't know that he could have we don't know that we don't know what would have happened um and we, again we didn't know what his reasons were for not answering but later on in the episode when he was telling his story giving us the breakdown of what kind of led her to that place unfortunate series of events but sometimes that's how it goes sometimes people just na ha have these thoughts all the time and sometimes it's just a particular event or a series of events that happen that kind of spiral out of control and lead them down that rabbit hole that thought process and lead them to 
making those sort of attempts. So with her, it seemed to be the latter where it's like, you know, she didn't, she, she was a normal girl according to him before this and, you know, didn't seem to really have any of those kind of thoughts or feelings. She was just a normal happy girl dating her girlfriend in the band. And then all of a sudden, girlfriend got a boyfriend and that broke her heart and that heartbreak just led her down this spiral then they even reference oh you mean that drunken performance that infamous drunken performance on the award show and we got a little flashback of that too and it's like yes it sent her down this spiral and we had that conversation um between her and ritsu where she was saying things and yes it felt like a very kind of obvious cry for help but then she kept trying to play it off as i'm only joking i'm only joking but it's like in hindsight hindsight is 2020 so looking back it's like oh no this was not a joke but even in that moment you could probably say that ritsu probably could have used a little bit more just observe keen observation in the because you could see that he was concerned about things she was saying and the, but then she's like i'm just playing but if I had a button here, I would totally press it. Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You could see him feeling concerned, but he didn't seem to really act any further on that. And it's like, what do you do in that situation other than try to reassure the person, hey, I'm here for you. If you need anything, please come talk to me, which I mean, I guess technically she was trying to do. She called him a bunch of times and he didn't answer. Um, but it's just a very very complicated gray area of the world that we're living in and then his reason for not answering he was busy i mean in you know to an outsider looking into the situation it may sound um like selfish or just like a shallow um prior to prioritization of um, that's the word I'm looking for. Like things of importance. Like it may seem that way, but I'm like, like I said before, I've lived my life for the last like year, year and a half with my cell phone on just vibrate. So he, he could just be having his phone on vibrate. He was busy. He was living his life. He did not know what was happening he was busy he could have been at work he could have been asleep there's any number of things he was preoccupied and did not notice that his phone was going off maybe his phone was also on vibrate who knows maybe it wasn't on vibrate and it was just ringing but he was in the throes of passion doing whatever he was doing things he was busy he did not know it would have been nice had he known because we have the magic of hindsight being 2020 and knowing what the result was so you know looking back it's like oh it would have been great had he noticed the phone was ringing and picked up in time but he did not and that's it sucks but it's to me it's like it's a valid i won't say excuse but like it's valid. He did not notice the phone. He did not notice the phone was ringing for whatever reason, whether it was on vibrate or he was just in those of passion, whatever. He didn't notice the phone was ringing. Had he known the phone was ringing, would he have answered? I would like to believe he would have, but he did not. It was just unfortunate timing of his, his life was progressing in a way at an unfortunate time that she needed him. And it's just an unfortunate series of events. It's, unfortunate and i feel like i've said that so many times throughout this series there's just an unfortunate series of events and that's life that is just the world the world sometimes is just an unfortunate series of events and sometimes things happen they're unfair and it doesn't necessarily mean that someone is in the right or someone is in the wrong they just happen to be preoccupied at the wrong time or they happen to be in a certain situation or in a certain place at a wrong time when someone else like that that's just life so 
it sucks. It absolutely sucks. But I don't think that it's fair to fully hold Ritsu accountable for what happened to Meguru's sister. And I don't think it's fair to put that burden on anybody's shoulders. It's, it's just a very interesting gray area. Um, and then we also had um, Yuma shoving Matsumi off a cliff. He didn't die, thankfully. Concussions, some sprained or potentially broken ankle and a fever. And, you know, now he's fine. Um, I said last episode that I was wondering what else um, Meguru's storyline was going to bring to the overarching plot in this series because since they said they were only a few hours away from her where she lived, I didn't think they were going to make these last three episodes last a few hours. But now they no longer have a car. They just have a bike. So potentially this may be our family unit for the rest of the series. They may not be getting back to their families. Um, they may be stuck with each other for the last four days that they have on this planet. In which case the last couple episodes may be with all of them. So who knows what else is going to develop? Who knows what other plot points are going to happen? We don't know. We don't know. But I'm going to find out because I'm going to dive into the next episode. I'm going to stop talking so I can do that. Hope you guys enjoyed this reaction and my chaotic babbling <laughs> during Topher Sot section. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, turn on notifications to be notified when all of my shenanigans get posted. If there's anything else you'd like me to react to, be sure to leave it down in the comments. I'll get to it as soon as I possibly can. If you'd like to support the channel in other ways, you're more than welcome to join us over on Patreon. You don't have to, but you're more than welcome to if you want to. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Love ya. Mwah. Yeah.